Let's talk about troubleshooting for a second. One of the most fundamental things to know buying a tube amplifier is that they can require some tube maintenance as time goes on. But if a problem does occur with an amp, it is generally tube related and can easily be resolved by some quick troubleshooting. With this in mind, consider picking up some spare tubes and a couple appropriate value fuses when buying a tube amplifier. These are tools every gigging guitar player will want in his gig bag, just in case. Now before going into any details about tube failure characteristics and how to deal with them, we need to outrule some common oversights that can occur. If an amp is completely powered up and the speaker is plugged in, but there is still no sound, there are a few things that should be checked first before you start troubleshooting the tubes. Number one, is the standby switch in the on position? Number two, are the output and master controls along with the gain and tone controls turned up? Number three, is the speaker cable firmly plugged into the amp and the speaker? Number four is to check, is the speaker cable working correctly? Perhaps swap it out to make sure. Number five, is the effects loop engaged without the mix or send level at least in their 12 o'clock normal position? Does the amplifier in question feature a mute circuit? If so, make sure it is not accidentally engaged. If you have gone through these steps and there's still no sound, it is possible that the problem is something other than the amp and cabinet, such as the guitar, the guitar cable, or any type of effects you may be using. The process of substitution or elimination may help you determine if any of these are the problem. Now let's get into some troubleshooting techniques. What do you do if a fuse blows in a boogie? First thing is not to panic. The amp did not blow up. If a fuse did blow, it means the amplifier is protecting itself and that's what it's supposed to do if a power tube or rectifier tube might be failing. Using the following simple troubleshooting techniques will allow you to quickly find which tube is causing the fuse to blow. Once you locate which tube is causing the problem, the solution is simply to replace the tube. And yes, changing a tube is as easy as changing a light bulb. First thing we suggest is you get the amplifier in a comfortable position make sure the power and standby switches are off. Next, pull out the AC voltage cable from the rear of the amplifier. Next, to check the integrity of the fuse, remove the fuse by pressing in slightly and turning and pulling straight out. This is an example of what a blown fuse looks like. Some can be less dramatic in appearance depending on the severity of the failure. Before reinstalling the new fuse, confirm that the AC cable has been removed from the amplifier. And check that the fuse value matches that which is printed on the chassis of the amplifier. To reinstall the fuse, place the fuse back into the fuse receptacle, pressing firmly and turning clockwise. Put the amplifier in a position where you can remove the two protective bar. Power and rectifier tube socket positions have thin, flexible metal clips designed to grasp the plastic base of the tubes. Spread these out by bending slightly downward, leaving room for the tube to come out. To remove the tube, pull upward and slightly rock back and forth. While the tubes are removed, take advantage of this opportunity to inspect the tube sockets. Make sure there are no burn marks. If any burn marks are detected, they must be removed by a tech before the amp will work. If the amp has a rectifier select switch, put it in the silicone diode position. Amps featuring multi-watt selector switches such as Stiletto Deuce, Stiletto Trident, Lone Star, or Lone Star Special must be set to full power to make sure that all the tube sockets are live. Now that the new fuse is installed, plug the amplifier back in. With the power and rectifier tube still removed from the amplifier, flip the power switch on. Does the pilot light come on and stay on? If yes, this is very good news because the amp itself is okay and you've isolated it to simply having a bad tube. If the pilot light does not stay on and the fuse has blown again, we have outruled that this is a tube related problem and the amp needs to be serviced by an authorized technician. 
Back to the original scenario of where we remove the tubes and replace the blown fuse with a new replacement fuse and the amplifier fired back up and remained on. We're now going to walk you through the process of identifying the bad tube starting with the rectifier tubes. And here's how. Start by making sure the power and standby switches in their off position. For amps with rectifier tubes, make sure the tube rectifier is selected. In the case of the Lone Star, not only switch the rectifier select switch to tube rectifier tracking, but also switch both channels to the 50 watt setting to ensure that the rectifier tube is active. For the Lone Star Special, simply select the 5 or 15 watt setting for the same reason. Now we're ready to load one of the rectifier tubes into one of the rectifier tube sockets. Please make a special note of the difference between a rectifier tube and a power tube as they can be similar in shape. It is also very important that you put the appropriate tube into the correct socket. At any point during the tube reinstallation you're not sure which tube goes into which socket, just reference the tube replacement chart on the inside of the cabinet. The first step when reinserting any of the tubes, in this case a rectifier tube, is to squeeze the metal clips so they will apply friction on the tube base as it goes into the socket. The next is to pay attention to the keyway on the tube to make sure that it is inserted correctly into the keyway on the socket. Now that you have the keyways aligned, simply push the tube back in. While observing the rectifier tube, give the amp a quick one second burst of power with the power switch. Make sure there is no arc or flash coming from that tube. If there is not a flash, place and leave the power switch on. If the amp remains lit, that rectifier tube is okay. Repeat this test with the other rectifier tube or tubes. If lightning or amp shutdown as a result of a blown fuse occurs any time during this test, it indicates a bad rectifier tube which needs to be replaced. In this example, the rectifier tubes have tested okay. We can now move on to testing the power tubes. When replacing power tubes, it is important to understand that power tubes work in matched pairs. Tubes are matched by a color code abbreviation located on the base of each power tube. In most cases, all the power tubes are going to be all the same color code. But in our example, they are not. We have a pair of yellow and a pair of red coated tubes. In this case, it's as simple as making sure that sockets 1 and 4 contain a matched pair, and sockets 2 and 3 contain a matched pair. Amplifiers that contain more than four power tubes, such as a triple rectifier or stiletto trident, it's a safe rule of thumb to match pairs from the outer sockets to the inner sockets. One exception to this rule is the Road King amplifier that features progressive linkage, which matches tubes in positions 1 and 2, 3 and 4, and 5 and 6, which are labeled on this amp. Now that we know which power tubes go into which sockets, we can begin troubleshooting them. To troubleshoot a power tube, start with the power and standby switches off. Load in one power tube. While observing the power tube you just inserted, push the power switch on. Let the tube warm up for about 30 seconds. After a 30 second warm up, then give the amp a quick burst from the standby switch. Make sure there is no arc or light flashes from the tube. If you saw no arc or light flashes, then push the standby switch on and leave it there. If the amp remains stable and powered up, that tube is okay. Now we're going to repeat this test using the matching tube in position 4. If you get a positive result from this tube, we can move on to the next pair. If anywhere in this process you have a tube that arcs, flashes, or blows the fuse, you've located the tube that needs to be replaced. Now that we have covered how to remedy a blown fuse, we have some tips for you in the event you come across an issue that may be occurring in the preamp. Preamp tube problems can take many forms, but can generally be described in two categories, noise and microphonics. Noise can be in the form of crackling, sputtering, white noise or hiss, and or hum. Microphonic problems usually appear in the form of a ringing or high-pitched squealing. This characteristic can get worse as the gain or volume are increased, thus are more noticeable in higher gain modes. Microphonic problems are easily identified because the problem is still present even with the instrument's volume off or unplugged altogether. Unlike pickup feedback, 
which ceases as the instrument is turned down. If you are dealing with microphonic characteristics that is eminent on all channels, the culprit is most likely to be the V1 preamp tube, as this is the most volatile stage in any tube amp. If you access the tube task chart in the owner's manual, you will see that V1 preamp tube is always located nearest the input jack in the amplifier. This is because the V1 tube is attenuating the entire input signal from the instrument, and then amplified by multiple stages thereafter. The tube that goes into this input socket needs to be the least noisy of the bunch, so in replacing you might need to try a couple different tubes in this position to make sure you have selected the most stable 12A7 for the job. Or, to guarantee stability in this position, you can try an SPX7 which has been twice tested for this specific application. Another way to approach preamp tube problems is to first see if the problem only occurs in one mode or specific channel or channels. If you do find that the problem is specific to a mode or channel, refer back to the tube function sections located on the tube task chart in the manual. This section describes the function of each preamp tube, which will lead you to the tube in question. It's important to note that within each preamp tube there are two sides, an A side and a B side. Therefore, each tube is capable of providing two functions within the amplifier. For example, if you had a problem that was only showing up in channels 2 and 3 in a dual rectifier, but channel 1 seems to be working fine, you will see by accessing the tube function section of the manual that the V3 position is specific to these channels. Or another example, if you found that there was no output only when the effects loop was engaged, you can see that V4 might be your culprit. If you're still having some problems locating which preamp tube is causing the problem, another approach you can take is to remove the protective metal shield from each preamp tube by pushing it in and twisting it until it releases. Then lightly tap each preamp tube one at a time using a pencil with an eraser. When doing so, make sure that the amp is on and plug into a speaker at a moderate volume level. Note that it is normal to hear a slight metallic ringing sound when tapping preamp tubes as long as they don't break into oscillation. If a tube does break into oscillation or begins crackling or any other bizarre noise when tapping on it, you've probably located the bad tube. And once you located the tube that's giving you the problems, all that remains is to simply swap it out with a known good performing 12AX7. Now that we have covered the type of preamp tube problems that can exist and how to find which tube is causing the problem, now let's go over the simple process of replacing one. Before we do, it is important to know that the tubes in a Mesa Boogie amplifier have already been located in the most appropriate sockets, and this is why you should never pull them all out at once, and always swap one tube at a time. Always return a perfectly good tube to its original socket. Also, it's a good idea to put the amp on standby before swapping tubes to reduce the heat buildup on the tubes themselves and to prevent explosive noises from coming through the speaker. To remove a preamp tube, grab a hold of it and pull it straight out of the socket by rocking it slightly back and forth if necessary. This would also be an optimal time to pay attention to the pin configuration on the tube as you pull it out so that you know how to line up the pins when replacing it. If there is no result from your substitutions, it may be possible that you have more than one problematic tube at the same time. Though rare, this does happen and it is still possible to cure the problem yourself. Remember, just take your time, be patient, and chances are real good that you can fix any amp by finding and replacing the bad tube. And at any time you would like some extra assistance, please don't hesitate to call your customer service department for added guidance. It kills us to see someone who has shipped an amp back to us claiming it needs repair, and all it needed was a simple tube replacement.